Good morning and welcome to my rounders lesson today. Um, just wanted to go through a few sort of elements of batting, of um, fielding, a few tactics, a couple of warm-up activities that we would be doing if we were having a full class rounders lesson. Um, have a look at some of the components that you would need as an effective rounders player and obviously some of the tactics that you could play plus um, a little look at scoring and how you would work innings and then obviously have a look at how you could include things like sportsmanship in your games as well. So we're going to start with basically having a look at the dimensions of the pitch. Haven't been very specific in the measurements. I usually sort of do it as a guide of nine. Nine strides from the batting square to the bowling square and then obviously nine strides out to each of the bases. We have the red line here. This is the line basically that is a metre behind the batting square and then obviously that stops the backstop from getting clobbered by the batter. We have our first base, we have our second base, that's where we start scoring half rounders. We have our third base and we have our fourth base. You'll see here the green line is um, showing the direction of the batter. But obviously what we do is we do have a dotted line, that is the run out line. And we'll have a look at that tactically um, a little bit later. So that is the layout of your pitch that you would have for rounders. Okay, so... Before we get warmed up to have a game of rounders, whatever your pitch dimensions are going to be looking like, and they're obviously not going to be looking like this at the moment, so you just have to go with the number of players and the equipment that you can find around your house um, that you've got around that can help you. Um, any kind of spherical object as well, it could be a ball, it could be a rolled up pair of socks, it could be a football, it could be a rugby ball. You can change the, um, the balls and size and sort of shape to go with the particular activity that you're doing as long as it's sort of the strike and fielding kind of thing. You even don't need to have a bat, you could use your hand as well and work with your hand-eye coordination. That is an important um, skill that you need in rounders. So when it comes to rounders and the components, then obviously what we've got is we have got down here four elements that will be quite important to your rounders game. You've got speed. It's very important that both the fielders have speed in terms of picking up the ball, speed in their throwing arm in getting the ball into the post players or back to the bowler. Remembering that when the bowler has the ball in their square, then obviously the rest of the batters need to stop at the post that they are running to. We also need speed getting around the uh, as a batter to get round from post to post. Um, that is very important. You don't really want to be getting out. Also, power. Power in your hit as a batter. You want to clear the post players and you want to hopefully clear beyond the outfielders as well. So power is very important in hitting. Power is also very important in your throw, particularly as an outfielding player. And obviously you can put a bit of power on a spin pass when you are a bowler. Reaction time is also very important. You have to react to the bowl, particularly if it's a spin bowl, it's going to be coming at you very fast and very straight. And obviously you need to be able to react to that and hit the ball. Um, in terms of reaction time as a fielder, then obviously you've got to react to catching the ball, to picking up and throwing it and making sure that you are stumping the base as well. Which brings us back to coordination. Coordination is also very important, both as a batter, you're looking at hand-eye coordination with the bat and hitting the ball, and obviously as a post player, catching the ball and stumping your player out with the post. So, a couple of warm-up activities that you can do. Obviously, it would be good to start with an SAQ warm-up, that's your speed, agility and quickness warm-up. And that is where you're doing various footwork patterns like jogging, side steps, crossover steps, heel flicks um, and lunges and then taking it into your stretches. So you've got your step and lunge, you've got your toe flicks into a hamstring stretch, you've got your open and close gates, sumo squats with various deltoid and, and tricep stretches as well. Um, and you can do maybe a sort of 
hop, hop and lunge. So you're actually doing some different moves, replicating what you might be needing to do on the pitch and for your strike and field games. What also might be quite fun to do is some conditioned games to warm up as well. Things that we've obviously done before in our lessons have included having a batter who will catch and throw the ball or hit the ball and then the rest of their teammates will all run round the outside of the posts. That's where they need to go. They need to follow the green line. And as they're running round, they all have to get the um, team, the whole team back past the fourth base before the ball is then fielded round each of the posts in turn. OK, so the beat the ball round round us is quite a good warm up activity. It gets the fielding players on their toes and it also raises the heart rate and works on the cardiovascular and short term effects of exercise on the cardiovascular systems. That is a good one to do. Another one that you could do is three ball rounders. I've got three balls here. We have three batters that would stand in the batting square. Each one of them would have a ball. Each one of them throw the ball at the same time. The balls have gone in three different directions as long as they don't go past the, um, the backstop. And I'll explain that tactic shortly. And then what they do is all the fielders then have to field the ball carefully and safely back to the bowler. And then the rest of the team have to run all the way round. And like the sort of warm up activity I explained before, every time you get round, you would get a rounder. And those points or those rounders can then go towards your team score in a final game at the end of the lesson. So let's have a look at some of the tactics. So what I mentioned a little bit earlier was hitting the ball behind. Now, ideally, the ball does not want to cross the back line here, this meter line beyond, or the front line of the batting square. There would be on a pitch a line drawn there and the ball needs to make sure it goes in front of it when you hit it. If it is a back backward hit then the backstop will take their time in fielding the ball they will then walk up to the front line of the batting square they will ideally be looking at their second post player and then they will be trying to throw the ball at second play at second base during a backhanded hit your batter will have run to first base but they will stop there and they must stop there until the ball has crossed the front line of the batting square. The umpire, the role of which I'll go through in a second, the umpires would then shout clear, in which case the batter will then be able to sprint from first to second and try and score. The batter needs to make sure that when they stop at any of the posts, they keep in contact with the post. They can play contact, in which case they will stand there at the post, they will wait for the ball and if it's misfielded, then they can sneakily run on and score half a rounder. So that is one of sort of the tactics when it comes to a backward hit. You don't ideally want to do it, but you can still score off it. Another tactical element of play that the batters can choose is that they can actually be a right handed batter, stand in the batting square, but obviously disguise their shot and then aim to do a backhanded hit. Now, obviously, as a tactic, it would be good if you can actually get the ball between first and second base. This gets the ball away from first base and more importantly, gets it further away from the fourth base player, which means the deep fielders would have to do an even longer throw to get the ball in. It is also very important for the batters to be able to communicate because if all the bases are loaded and we have a batter at first, second and third and the fourth batter is coming in, then those players need to be able to swiftly run around the bases so they none of them get stumped out. As a fielding player, there are a number of ways you can get a player out. You can catch them out. You can stump them out. And obviously, you can get two players out in one bowl. You could possibly look to get the first the batter out as they run to first or second. And then if you've already got a batter on the posts, 
you can get the ball quickly to fourth base and then get that remaining batter out if they're stumped out at fourth. So going back to our other tactical elements, we've got communication. Now this is very important both for the batting team. You do not want your partner running you out if they are not listening to you and you're already stuck on a base. You obviously need to um, be aware of what your teammates might be shouting at you because if you can't see the ball and you are focusing on running around the pitch, they might actually be shouting to you that the ball's mis been misfielded and you can go for a rounder. Communication also in making sure that the batters get into the squares quickly when their name is called so they are ready to take their hit. The fielding team also need to communicate as well. This is particularly important if there is a lofted or aerial ball and you have two fielders going for the same ball to go for a catch. If one of them doesn't catch that it's called, cool, that it's going to be theirs, then there is the danger that they could actually collide and cause an accident. So it's very important that when you're going for a catch, you shout that it will be yours or you shout your name so the other fielder knows that you are going for it. Obviously, you have got thing, people like your second base, your bowler, your backstop and your fourth base who, who will be calling where they want the ball to go. So for example, if the batter is already at first base, it's no point throwing the ball to her, that needs to go to second base. It needs to go to the base that they are running to. And obviously a ball should travel quicker than a sprinting batter. So it's very important that we are communicating. Tactical awareness. As I've mentioned before, this could be the order of your batters, so you're mixing up your right and left-handed players. For a fielding team, that could also include taking your third and first base players off their bases so they join the deep fielders. And for some teams, it might also include their second base player coming off her base and joining the outfielders too. Your backstop will tactically back up your fourth base and your bowler will tactically back up your second base. Those are the important bases where you are going to start scoring rounders. Okay, and finally, innings. How would you play a rounders game? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can use, really. You can use a timed innings, and then as soon as that time is over, then you can actually switch over. A tactic that the fielding team might employ in this case is the sooner and quicker they get their team out, the batting team out, then the sooner they can get their team back in, use the remaining minutes of that innings and score rounders. You can also have, for example, a 30 or a 20 good ball innings. This is where each good ball or good bowl is marked off. And when you get to 20 good bowls or 30 good bowls, then you would change over batting and fielding. One good tactic on this one is that if you have a no ball and you do hit the ball, then obviously you can use that as bonus scoring because that wouldn't count towards the good bowl total. Okay, so those are two ways that you can do innings. You might do innings where it could be um, if someone's caught out one catch, then everybody's out. You could do one innings or another kind of innings where three out, all out. It depends on the number of players and obviously you can mix and match the team. So it makes it a little bit more exciting and obviously gets people on their toes and gives them a little bit more focus on getting people out.